then we come to modification so a lot of people quickly realize that this malocclusion was far from or this classification of malocclusion was far from perfect malocclusion has various manifestation and other features that angle did not take into account so they took out their own classification the first one of the first was leisure which you have he gave basically two modifications so the first one i you must have seen was neutro occlusion which was class 1 he called class 1 a neutro occlusion which means it is neutral second is a disto occlusion which is a class 2 and then mesio occlusion which is a class 3 so this was the first modification he gave them different names then his second um modification was that he used different terms with the suffix of version to describe those tooth positions so we let's take this patient as a ideal patient or as a model patient to study these terms so the first term that he used was mesio version mesio version means a tooth that is present mesially to where it should be like we can we can see in this the canine the canine is in mesio version which means it is present more mesially to where it should have been the opposite of mesial is distal so distal or disto version which means that the tooth is present distally to where it should be for this we can take a look at this seven which is present more distally than it should be so two term mesio version disto version sec third term is supra version which means that it is present upward the what it should be again this canine as you can see is in supra version or present more superiorly than it should be the opposite of superior is infra version which means inferiorly so the maxillary incisors of this patient are in infra version which means that they are present inferiorly to what they should be then there is labio version or lingual version a labio version tooth is a one that is present labially like this lateral incisor it is in labial labio version present labially and lingual version is present lingually like again the maxillary incisors now you can see them comparatively the lateral is in uh, labio version and maxillary centrals are in lingual version then his last term was torsi version torsi version means that the tooth is rotated like this premolar here is rotated over here it is in torsi version or it is a rotation okay then there was another scientist called as dewey who modified angle even further and he grouped class 1 and class 3 into different categories so class 1 is in five groups and class 3 is in three groups so let's try to study them one by one we will remember them with the mnemonic the mnemonic is called as c papa so pa c is crowding which is the first one the patient has a class 1 molar relation and the patient has anterior crowding so this is a angled class 1 type 1 then there is proclination so this is for all the bidental protrusions that we have spoken about so this is class 1 molar relation with proclined teeth over here so this is angles class 1 type then there is the a or anterior cross bite and p for posterior cross bite and a stand for mesio version of molars so this we can see is an anterior cross bite even though the molar relation is class 1 similarly over here there is 
posterior cross bite even though molar relation is class 1. So, this is type 3, this is type 4 and this is type 5 in which the maxillary molar is migrated nasally. Then we come to modification of class 3. The mnemonic is E N C. Instead of E N T, there is E N C. So, first one is edge to edge bite. Type 1 is edge to edge. The second is the bite is normal, but the incisors are crowded. And third is complete anterior cross bite. The British Standard Institute's incisor relation classification was given in the year 1983 by Ballard and Wayman. This basically stems from the fact that the angles classification plays too much importance on a single tooth or the molar tooth. So, they divided it according to the incisor as class 1, class 2, division 1 and class 2, division 2 on class 3. Similarly, we also have a canine classification, a premolar classification, etc. So, the first one is when the mandibular incisors lie immediately below the cingulum of the maxillary incisors. In class 2, the mandibular incisors lie posterior to the cingulum of the maxillary incisor in division 1 and in division 2, they lie very close to the cingulum of the maxillary uh, incisors and in class 3, there is an anterior cross bite or the mandibular incisors lie anterior to the cingulum of the maxillary incisor with no overjet or overbite. These are some examples that I have taken. In this, you can see the mandibular incisors lie immediately below the maxillary incisors. In div 2, they lie posteriorly to the cingulum, but they might touch the cingulum as the maxillary incisors are retroclined. In div 1, they lie much posterior to the cingulum and often touch the palate. And in 3, there is an interior cross bite. In cat's premolar classification, the importance was placed on the first premolar. So, we see here that the first premolar occludes in the embrasure that is formed by the mandibular first premolar and mandibular second premolar. Over here, the first premolar lies anterior to the embrasure formed by the mandibular first and second premolar. And in class, this is class 1, this is class 2 and this is class 3. In class 3, the maxillary first premolar lies distal to the embrasure that is formed by the mandibular first and second premolar. Ackerman Profit classification was given in the year of 1990s by Ackerman and Profit. So, if you remember the 1990s were when the computers were being introduced in a large scale. A lot of dentists were now required to use a computer for record keeping of their patients. So, they wanted a classification system that could be easily stored on the computer and would serve as a record. Now, the angles classification was posing to be a problem because it did not give us a great deal of detail or depth of how the patient's malocclusion was. So, Ackerman Profit classification used the system of Venn diagrams which were very compatible with computer systems. So, they used five characteristics. First being the alignment, which is the crowding and the spacing of the arches. The second is the profile, which is concave, convex and straight. And third is the type or the transverse relationship. So, TT, then four is class or the sagittal relation which is class 1, class 2, class 3 as given by angle and fifth is the bite depth or deep or the vertical relation. So, let us have a look at the Venn diagram. The Venn diagram is the one that has 
a lot of circles like this. So, if this is a big circle and this is another circle, this point of intersection will be those group of people that are a part of this circle also and this circle also. And the third one will be the one that have the, the middle will have characteristics of all the three circles. So, the first was alignment. Alignment gives us the ideal crowding and spacing. How the arch of the patient is? Does, is it crowded? Does it have spacing? Then the second is the profile of the patient which is straight, concave or convex. As we have studied in our lecture on diagnosis and then there is divergence which means whether the patient is anterior divergent or posterior divergent as given by Milo Hellman. Then we come to group 3 or transverse. Now the crossbite here can be buccal, palatal. Buccal crossbite or a palatal crossbite which is also this is a scissors bite. Then it can be unilateral which can be one sided or bilateral which is both sided. Then we come to the fourth group which is sagittal and we have already studied in angle class 1, class 2, class 3 and it can be a dental class 1 in which only the teeth are in class 1 or class 2 or it can be a skeletal class 1 which is again a skeletally class 1 or a skeletal class 2. Then there is a group 5 or vertical which it is basically a deep bite or a open bite whether it is an interior deep bite or a posterior deep bite or an interior open bite or a posterior open bite. Now what we need to know is the intersection of these groups. So the sixth group is transsagittal which means that the patient will have a transverse problem as well as a sagittal problem. So a patient can have a buccal cross bite with a class 2 molar relation and he will fall in group 6. Then we come to group 7 which is sagitto vertical which means that the patient will have a sagittal problem as well as a vertical. So the patient can have an anterior open bite and a class 3 malocclusion will fall in group 7 and he will not have a cross bite or a scissors bite. Then a group 8 is vertical transverse which means the patient has a vertical problem as well as a transverse problem. So the patient can have a deep bite and a um, buccal cross bite. So he will fall in group 8. And the most complex of problems is this little triangle over here transsagitto vertical which means the patient has all three problems in all three planes. The patient probably has a a uh, buccal cross bite with a class 3 malocclusion and a deep bite. So, this is an explanation of all these groups. So, the group 1 is the outer envelope or the universe which has all your alignment problems and symmetry. Group 2 lies within this group 1 which handles the profile which is a uh, concave convex straight which concave like convex falls in class 1 and a class 3 is a concave profile. 3, 4, 5 are the 3 planes that we have studied transverse, sagittal and vertical planes. Like um, so, uh, transverse as a 3, sagittal is the 4 and vertical is the group 5. Then there is 6, 7, 8 which tells us the overlapping of 3, 4 and 5. And 9 is the one that tells us the overlapping of all these groups. So, it is the most severe because it has involvement of all three planes. So, let us take a look at this patient. And she is the one that would probably fall in a group 9 because she has involvement of all groups. So, let us start with the alignment. We can see the alignment is at fault because there is some crowding here. Then we come to the profile. The profile of the patient is also different. It is a convex profile. Then what was group 3? Group 3 was a transverse problem. The patient has a constricted upper arch. Then we come to group 4 which was a sagittal. Now the patient over here has a class 2 molar relation with proclined incisor. So, she also has a problem in the sagittal plane or the fourth group problem and fifth is a deep bite. 
So she is a patient who would fall in the most severe category. So what are the pros and cons of Ackerman profit classification? Let's make a table. So the pros as we have discussed it was made to be compatible with computer systems. So it is very compatible with computer systems and can be easily used with a computer. It also takes into account the malocclusion in all three planes. All three planes are taken into account and the last is that it takes into account the soft tissue profile of the patient which is the group 2. Then what are the cons? The cons is that again it is a static a classification it does not take into account the functional problems the patient might have like pseudo class 3. The pseudo class 3 will not fall into the correct category it might be falling into a class 3. So it does not take into account the function is not recorded. Also it does not tell us about the etiology the reason why a patient be class 2 class 3 deep bite or what the possible reason for the malocclusion could be. So, this was the last slide of the presentation. Thank you for being a patient listener. This is again a topic that is of great interest to the examiner in Viva and this forms the basis of a lot of further um, reading like a diagnosis. And uh, the questions that are commonly asked are regarding the Ackerman profit classification, the pros and cons of angles classification. And uh, often in uh, certain places, pseudo class 3 is asked as a viva question as well as a short note question. Thank you.